Hey guys, it's, uh, it's been a while since the last review. I know I catch you guys waiting for so long and I'm really sorry about that, but there is some reasons why. I made a little update video about it and, well, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to repeat myself as the reasons why I've been late. So if you want to check it out, if you want to know why, um, well, for those who haven't known, uh, it's in the link in the description box down below if you want to check it out. But I'm here to let you know that I'm okay. I'm feeling much better. I'm getting back into the groove again with Diamonds and Breakable. And I'm here to bring you my review on episode 23, part one of Sheer Heart Attack. And this was a pretty good episode. Very suspenseful, plenty of action. And of course, we get some growth and character development of Koichi, and finally, Star Platinum in action! Something I've been waiting for since episode one. I mean, okay, there was some brief action, but you know what I mean, that good old-fashioned Star Platinum order be down. That kind of action. So in this episode, Jotaro and Koichi are confronted by sheer heart attack. This tank bomb, which is a second bomb of Killer Queen. Killer Queen's secondary ability, and in a way, its own kind of stance. Uh, that I'll have to get into later, but after killing the Taylor guy, Kira managed to snatch his jacket and got away. However, considering what we've seen of Kira before, he's definitely going to try to kill Jotaro and Koichi so that he can sleep soundly knowing that nobody will come after him if they're dead. Even though Koichi does want to go after him, which is understandably so, but they still gotta deal with sheer heart attack. And this is where we get to see Star Platinum in action, which is great because I miss Star Platinum, I miss his Ora Be Downs, and it was so great seeing him beat the ever living crap out of Sheer Heart Attack. But the thing is, this stand is very durable. Not even Star Platinum, who we've all known has incredible strength, cannot break this thing. He managed to dent it, but not break it, which is very surprising, especially since Star Platinum is so strong, it can break rocks that are as strong as diamonds. And even when Jotaro stops time, it's still not enough against Sugar Heart Attack, and even his knuckles start bleeding. However, Jotaro has been very observant, and has been teaching Koichi to observe his surroundings, and to listen, and to look carefully. So it just shows like how much Jotaro has grown after the events of Star Wars Crusaders. So again, liking Jotaro being the mentor kind of role, not only to Josuke, but also to Koichi. However, Koichi at the beginning was starting to get on my nerves, because he assumed that Jotaro was underestimating him and his stand echoes, and he assumed that Kira has to be close by considering how sheer heart attack has been working. But because of Jotaro's experience with dealing all kinds of stands back in part 3, he knows that might not be the case. But Koichi... God fucking damn it Koichi. Not considering Jotaro's past experience, he still thought that Kira had to be close by, at least within Echo's range, but when he used Act 2 to find Kira, he learned that Kira was farther away, meaning that Sheer Heart Attack still had this like immense power and strength, which would mean that Sheer Heart Attack kind of acts like an automatic kind of stand, really. And it's learned later on that Sheer Heart Attack actually is a heat-seeking tank bomb. It goes after whatever has the greatest amount of heat. In the case of the Taylor guy, a Sheer Heart Attack went after him because he was holding coffee, and then it went after Koichi because his body temperature was greater than Jotaro since he was getting all worked up. Unfortunately, he couldn't defend himself because Echoes was far away from him and so he couldn't call upon his stand to protect him. So Jotaro had to stop time and create a fire before Sheer Heart Attack went after Koichi. Which Jotaro was very observant on this and was able to deduce that Sheer Heart Attack went after anything with higher levels of heat. Which makes me think, why the hell is this guy a marine biologist and not a detective? I mean, seriously, his deducing skills are nuts. Like, come on. Unfortunately, with sheer heart attack, the greater the heat that it goes after, the greater the explosion. Hence, what happens with Jotaro when he tried to get away from sheer heart attack and even tried to defend himself with star platinum. Unfortunately, the explosion was too strong that he got caught in the explosion and was hurt and he's now unconscious. God damn it. 
You know what's funny? I was actually more disappointed than upset and worried about Jotaro because I, I know he's gonna survive. It's just that, can we at least get Jotaro to have one victory before part four ends? I mean, at least Joseph had at least like one or two victories under his belt in part three. Jotaro is over nothing. I mean, I get it. He's supposed to be the supporting character, but come on, at, at least one victory in a way. Please, at least before part four ends, because this is just sad. <laughs> so with Jotaro unconscious, uh, Koichi is the only one left, and, and he dragged Jotaro into the kitchen, which I'm surprised he was able to do that considering how short he is, and I guess he's got a lot of upper body strength, but yeah. He tried to create more sources of heat for Shihara Tag to go after. Unfortunately, the kitchen didn't have a lot of heat sources. He tried to use the stove, for example, but it was an electric stove and not a gas stove, so it would take some time to get some heat. So, Koichi was panicking, then calms down, gets angry, and we get badass Koichi again, which is great. His buzz cut hairdo then changed back to that spiky hairdo that I liked, and he realized that Sheer Heart Attack does have a weakness. He summons Echoes Act 2 and creates the sound effect sizzle, for sheer heart attack to go after it like a donkey with a carrot hanging over his head. Which is actually pretty funny, but in hindsight, sheer heart attack is pretty dumb. I mean, this thing can't tell the difference between fire and a human and an electric stove. It just goes whatever has the greatest source of heat. So that gave Koichi enough time to call Josuke and let him know where he is. Unfortunately, the stove then starts to heat up, even though Koichi did turn it off, so I guess the thing was faulty or he didn't know how it worked. Koichi was able to narrowly escape the explosion as well as Jotaro. However, Act 2 was still inside the building and it got caught with an explosion. He tries to call upon his stand but his stand was nowhere to be seen. All he saw was a shell of Act 2, which then leads to Koichi's new stand evolution, Echoes Act 3, and its design is completely the opposite compared to its previous acts. It does not look lizard-like, but humanoid and kind of resembles Frieza in a way, and it even wears basketball shorts, which I thought was kind of funny. Not only that, but this thing is sentient. Yeah, Act 3 is able to have a mind of its own. It's able to talk to its stand user, which was strange, which means that Koichi has matured greatly, or maybe the explosion triggered Act 2 to evolve into something greater to handle against a sheer heart attack. Well, either way, Act 3 is kind of like Anubis in a way, since it has sort of like its own mind, but it is loyal to Koichi. And we get to see its new technique, three freeze. And this thing has nothing to do with sound whatsoever. What it does is Act 3 makes this hand motion and this energy like gathers around his hand and it punches sheer heart attack. And what three freeze does is that it adds weight to its target, whatever it punches. I don't know if it depends on the number of punches it lands or uh, the amount of energy it gathers from its hands, but it adds a lot of weight to whatever it punches, in this case with your heart attack, to the point where it sank into the concrete and stopped moving. Meanwhile with Kira, he was at a cafe. <laughs> Um, he doesn't seem to be aware exactly of what's going on, but he is aware of sheer heart attack being active and he was like wondering what's taking so long with sheer heart attack. And in this one scene, we actually see his left hand have this like cat imprint on his hand. So that leads me to believe that sheer heart attack is connected to um, Kira's hand. Which means that Kira's left hand was getting heavy to the point where he could barely lift it and he broke the cup and the table at the cafe. Uh, one waiter tried to like lift up the hand to help him up but Kira accidentally ripped off his clothes. <laughs> Which was pretty funny especially how um, the waiter reacted to that <laughs> in a way. So because of this revelation he knows that something is up so he has to go back to the shoe store and retrieve sheer heart attack. Meaning that we'll get an eventual confrontation between Koichi and Kira. And that is where the episode ends. This is gonna be tense. In fact, this episode was pretty tense itself. And overall, it was a very good one. 
Again, I really appreciate uh, the part for Jotaro being the mentor kind of character. Uh, he definitely has grown and changed considering what he was before back in part 3 and considering like what he's done. But again, I really, really want him to at least win in one fight. Or at least give us like a Star Platinum Ora Bidou that's very satisfying, at least before part 4 ends. But at least we got to see Star Platinum in action. The kind of action that I wanted to see Star Platinum in for a long time, which was great. But he's out of commission for now. Don't know when he'll get back, uh, but probably not for a long while. Which is actually pretty funny considering that the amount of damage he took from Sheer Heart Attack was way more severe to him than all that shit he went through against Dio. <laughs> yeah. Kira was able to knock out Jotaro, something Dio couldn't do. As for Sheer Heart Attack, it's a very interesting stand ability, and considering how it acts, it acts like an automatic type stand. And the funny thing is, this thing has like its own stats, like it's its own kind of stand in a way, which does give Kira an advantage because they assume that Sheer Heart Attack is his stand, but in actuality, it's Killer Queen. So since Sure Heart Attack has its own stats. Does that mean that this is an entirely own stand? Which shouldn't be possible considering that stand users can only have one stand. But we did see Dio have two stands before back in part 3. But that was because he had Jonathan's body and, that, and technically Jonathan had like his own stand. In the previous episode, Kira did say that Sure Heart Attack is a secondary bomb. A secondary ability of Kira Queen. But considering how it acts like an automatic type stand, how it kind of acts independently in a way, maybe Sheer Heart Attack is a part of Killer Queen. It's just a portion of Killer Queen, which would mean that Killer Queen would have his own stand. The stand has its own stand, which is kind of strange, but that's what I'm led to believe about Sheer Heart Attack. Especially since like it's connected to Kira's left hand, which would mean that this is also connected to Killer Queen's left hand. Which actually does make sense, because the left hand is Sheer Heart Attack, and the right hand is his, like, main primary bomb ability. As for Koichi, I'll admit I was irritated with him at the beginning, not considering what Jotaro said to Heart at the beginning, only until, like, later on. Because he just assumed that Jotaro was underestimating him, which is not really the case. And I understand him wanting to go after Kira, but considering Sheer Heart Attack is a tough stand, they have to deal with that first. Although, what I don't get is, like, why couldn't Koichi just describe Jotaro, Kira's appearance, since he did see what he looked like, but I guess he was, like, too distraught over what he learned about Kira being too far away, and yet Sheer Heart Attack having this amount of power. But at least Koichi owned up to his mistakes, he made up for it, he kind of redeemed himself in a way. Not only that, but seeing Act 3 in action was pretty cool, and I really like Act 3's appearance. It looks more like Frieza, in a way, instead of his previous acts, which looked more like a cell. And, you know, a lot of people have drawn parallels with him and Gohan, in a way, so yeah. And Act 3 is completely different compared to Acts 1 and 2, but overall, Act 3 is pretty awesome, especially when he swore by spelling out shit. <laughs> I mean, S-H-I-T, like what the hell. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of Act 3. And 3 Freeze, that was pretty cool. And just to let you guys know, I was aware about Act 3 because of the video game, so I was really looking forward to seeing it finally appear, which I wasn't expecting so soon in a way, considering that we haven't seen a lot of Act 2. But yeah. Koichi did good in this episode, but my question is, can Act 3 hold its own against Killer Queen? Because Kira is going to go back, he's going to retrieve Sheer Heart Attack, which means that he is going to confront Koichi. He's going to expose himself, confront him face to face. Some serious shit is going to go down when that happens. So Josuke better hurry the hell up to get to Koichi's location, otherwise Koichi's in some serious trouble. I mean, this is Kira we're dealing with. Hopefully he doesn't die against Kira, because that that would be terrible. I mean, he just died when he finally got Act 3. That would, that would completely suck. But not only that, but we really do need a confrontation with the new main Jojo against the new main villain. So we need to see uh, Josuke confronting against Kira, because that still has to happen. 
In terms of animation and artwork, it was very good, especially like how 3 Freeze was animated, especially Act 3. And of course, Kira's design, when he was like hiding behind the wall, you see Killer Queen, it looks very good. And music, once again, was also spot on. I was so happy that they played the Star's Crusaders theme while Star Platinum was beating up Sheer Heart Attack. That was like, that brought back some great nostalgia back in part 3. Uh, hopefully that will continue on whenever Star Platinum does get another beat down. Hopefully, fingers crossed on that. And so yeah, the next episode is part two, which means Koichi is going to confront uh, Kira, obviously. Hopefully he'll be okay, and hopefully Josuke will get there on time. Uh, but I still think some serious shit is going to go down. So tell me guys, what did you think of episode 23 of Diamond is a Breakable? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you think of Sheer Heart Attack as a whole? And were you happy to see Star Platinum in action finally, like for old time's sake, which I thought was great? Also, what did you think of Act 3 and its new technique, 3 Freeze, which has nothing to do with sound. I always thought that whenever a stand evolves to like a new level, it would at least get an advanced version of its ability, but no. This technique is actually more weight-based than sound-based, so yeah. Uh, overall, looking forward to seeing more of Act 3. Really liking it so far. I mean, Echoes is a pretty cool stand, really. So, so tell me your thoughts about this episode in the comment section down below. Like the video if you like it, subscribe to more, and be sure to check out my Facebook fan page and Google+. So yeah, that was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamonds are Breakable, Episode 23. I'm going to respond to seven, and I'll see you guys next time on Episode 24, Sheer Heart Attack Part 2. See you guys.